Hey guys, I'm Zach. Welcome back to Bear Mountain Builds. And today I'm going to show you how simple it is to install a T-Track. So I put T-Tracks into a couple of my projects now and I really love them and a lot of you seem to like it too so you've been leaving comments asking how I actually did that. So I thought I'd put together this short video about how to install T-Track. It really is super simple. All you need to be able to do is measure and have a router. Now I just so happen to have some T-Track that I've been meaning to put into the other side of my miter saw table over there. and. I just got a new battery powered 20 volt max compact DeWalt router and I am super excited to use one of these. I've never used a battery powered router before so I'll give you a review of this too. Now let's get started. Now for this video I'm going to be assuming you know how to use a router but I will be going over my setup for my depth of cut. Now I'm using a 3 quarter inch bit because my T-Tracks are 3 quarter inches wide so that way I don't have to worry about doing multiple cuts or anything. So first off, I'm going to take a test piece of wood, lay that down, and then put two T-Tracks on top of it. And then I will set my router down on top of those two T-Tracks, and I'm going to slowly pull it along as I push the bit down further until I feel the bit touch the wood because my sliding will have stopped. See, and there it is. I'm at the right depth now, so I can lock it off, and now I can do a test cut. Now, to start off, I put down a straight edge on my test piece of wood and I'm going to draw a line right where the straight edge is right now. And then I'll put my router up against it. I'm going to cut about six inches so I can get a feel if my T-Track fits well or not. Now that I have my test cut done, I can make sure that the depth is correct with my T-Track so I can just shove it in here and it feels really good. It's like basically perfectly flush, so this is really good. And then I can pull this out and take my straight edge off right here, and I still have a line made to the edge of my cut. And I can take a tape measure and measure the distance from my cut to the line, which looks like it is one and five eighths. And now I know that's where I need to mark on my final cut for where my straight edge needs to go versus where I actually want my cut to be. All right, so here's the left side of my miter saw table and this is where I'm gonna be putting my T-Track in. Now what I've done to start off with is I put down painter's tape on both sides. This lets me make marks on this without having to worry about marring the wood and it will protect the wood from being blown out when I put the router through it. Now, what I want here is my T-Track to have a spacing of three quarter inches between the face of my fence to the edge of the T-Track. So I've made a mark where I measured out three quarter inches right here and then I need to make a mark for my straight edge, which I measured before is an inch and five eighths away. So I measured from this point right here back to here, and that is where I'm gonna be putting my straight edge. So for this side, I've made marks for where my T-Track is gonna go right here, and I have made another mark for where my straight edge will be. Now, let's get this fence off and start cutting. I'm really impressed with the weight and power of this DeWalt compact router. It seems to cut just as easily as my corded Bosch router. Now, the cut turned out pretty well, but I felt the adjustment ring on the router spin just a little while I was cutting. This ended up making my channel deepen by about a 30 second of an inch, which isn't a really big deal, but since I do have a black melamine top, I can see that the T-Track isn't flush. However, there is an easy fix above laying five strips of three quarter inch tape down the channel. This will just bump that T-Track up a little bit and make it flush.
Now, this is more my fault than anything. I should have used the router a bit more to get familiar with it instead of using it straight out of the box. I also went back and the clamp here, you can use an Allen wrench key. And if you just loosen up the clamp, you can then tighten your clip down a little bit more so it clamps even harder. That way, I shouldn't get any of that adjustability as I go through anymore. So just a thing to know when you're using this. But still, all in all, really great router. Love it. Now I'm using some drywall screws to mount the T-Track because I really like the black hardware look. Since T-Track is made of aluminum, you can cut it on a miter saw with a carbide tip blade. I use a retired carbide tip 10 inch blade whose wood cutting days are gone, but it's T-Track days are bright. Just make sure to label it because it really won't cut wood after. After a quick once over with the file to clean up the burrs off the end, it's ready to drop in. And with that, the T-Track is in. It really is super simple and it looks really great. And as for my review of the DeWalt 20 volt max compact router, this thing does not lack in power whatsoever and I think it really is a great addition if you already have a DeWalt system. Now I should add, DeWalt is not sponsoring this video at all. They're not telling me to say nice things about this. I just really like DeWalt tools and I've been wanting to get the battery powered router for a while and I gotta say, it's awesome, definitely worth the money. So if you're interested at all, I'll link it down below in the description. And as always, if you like this video, hit the like button for me because it helps me out a lot, helps the channel out a lot. And leave a comment, let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you think about the DeWalt router yourself. And as always, hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of my videos because I got plenty more projects coming. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.